Hi, it's Charles Kelly, Money Tips with you again. Today, I'm welcoming back Milan Patel of Customized Financial Services uh, because we've had such a good response to his previous uh, videos that we wanted to sort of update you and bring him back to talk again about wills and trusts, which are very, very important. Uh, a lot of people think they're only for the rich and powerful and the landed gentry, but we can all use trusts and especially wills. Everybody should have a will. I saw a statistic recently that said only 50% of people in the UK have a will. And a lot of those people are not even thinking about doing one. That was according to Canada Live. So welcome, Milan. Milan, Milan, welcome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so why should people have a will, for instance? Can, can you give me, I, I know what it is, but what, what would your summary of people who say, well, I don't need a will, it would all go to the wife and kids anyway. Why, why do you need a will? Well, if you don't have a will, then the state will determine where it goes. The rules of intestacy are quite archaic. So even if you've got a small amount of assets, why would you want somebody else, the government, decide uh, to where it goes? You should decide where it goes. Yeah. Um, people are not aware that even if you, you know, someone passes away, within two years, you can actually change the will. That is for right. Prince of China. So you should have a will. And if you've got assets, you know, uh, maybe over eight and fifty thousand, you should have a tax efficient will. So I can help you when people say, for example, my portfolio landlords, They've got about three million pounds of property. Um, well, I think on three million pounds, join just by breaking the tenancy, you can save a lot of money from joint tenants to tenants in common. Right. Um, explain that. What does joint tenants and tenants in common mean? Well, when you when you buy a property, there are two ways of buying a property if it's two or more people. Joint tenancy, tenants in common. So when you go to the conveyance, uh, they'll say, "Give us five hundred pounds for the transaction." Then they just tell you tick these boxes. They should not be yeah. doing that. What they should tell you is that there are two ways of owning a property: joint tenancy, tenancy in common. No property should be in joint tenancy. Every property should be tenancy in common. In joint tenancy, yeah. say a typical uh, couple buy a property. If the husband dies, if it's in joint tenancy, it goes automatically to wife. It overrides the will. The will is of no use. It may be the best will in the world. There's no use. And second thing, it'll cause problems when, when, when the second person passes away because everything will be lumped in your estate. So now, the other thing is that, say, the wife then falls mentally, mentally, gets mentally um, in, incapable and, you know, she, she gets dementia, for example, you know, and she goes into care. They can even take all the equity if it's in joint tenancy. In tenancy in common, they can take only your equity. You do not. You do not need to. To you can protect against care fees. You can protect against. Uh, you know, and everybody should have a tenth. Everybody should have a tenth in common. If you're happily married, it can be fifty fifty. If you're newly married, and say the wife's earn a lot of money, you can you can make it unequal. But it's so important to to make sure that okay, you, you option um you know to where your assets go. So just to clarify, joint tenancy is where you both own it joint. If one dies, it automatically passes to the other. Tenants in common is where you would own 50% share each effectively. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. And for inheritance tax, say you jointly own a property of a million pounds. In joint tenancy, you jointly own it. As soon as you split it 50-50, then it becomes half a million each. So that's good for inheritance tax purposes also. And can that be changed? later on so can you go back to your lawyer and say look i didn't like the way you set this up i want to change it well if, if the property is in joint tenancy i, I use a I use, my, my team is a state planning team i which i use and basically all you need is called a deed of severance you give notice to each other okay that, that you want to break the tenancy and then i think there's a serve one form you file a land registry so you can break it from joint tenancy to tenants in common you, you can't turn it back from tenants in common to joint tenancy, but okay. no no property should be in joint tenancy. And 70% of the people I've been doing this for 30 years are in joint tenancy. Yeah, it's a normal thing with husband and wife. They buy together. It's just, as you say, tick a box, and they don't know the difference. And the lawyer doesn't really explain. A lot of people are using these remote lawyers that they're cheap, but they're not giving any advice, are they? Yeah, but the lawyer should 
tell you the two ways and then explain it to you, but just put a tick box, so it okay. doesn't really help anyone, you know. So just before I go on, I just want to say, if you need any help with this, just email me, charles at charleskelly.net, or we'll give some other contact details if you if you need help with wills. It's very important. Milan runs a service where he'll sort out your will. Can I just go back a bit? Because a lot of, in the past, everyone was Mr. and Mrs. Husband and Wife. They had a family, and, and that was it, like, like my parents. But nowadays, it's different, isn't it? People get married. They get divorced. They have children here and children there. And then in the family, there might be children from the previous marriage, children from the current marriage. So things are complicated. So if you die without a will, then it, it's it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? If people die, and there's lots of broken families in Britain now. It is it is a mess when the instance where say the married couple and say they divorce, and say the, the say the the, the 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 former wife marries somebody else's children with another gentleman. If you don't plan, your assets could 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 go to the other to, to the other person's gentleman's children. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that people people need common law is very powerful. So in in the UK we have the concept of trust in English law. In Liechtenstein and and uh, and Switzerland is called a foundation. Now I had a case where um, this is a Swiss uh, a Spanish bank a Spanish private bank. They had a rich English gentleman worth, you know, maybe tens of millions of euros. He he then had a meeting with his trustees, and he had his ex-wife and children from the ex-wife, and and the mistress with with children from mistress, and they sat on one table. It's very powerful. So they all sat on the table, and he put one condition. He said, "I'm putting one condition. I, I've decided to give you whatever you deserve to get." But if you question anything you get, you get nothing. So common law is very powerful. So the use of trusts are in English law. Now people are talking about the government change. Use of trusts, this is the year 1197. Um, you know, I'm in Waterloo, some in Waterloo. Also, we didn't have underground those days. I just meet Charles, uh, you know. So Charles, this is the year 1197. I'm going to go and fight the Crusades. Yeah. Mass, it's simple. And, and that's going to remain whichever government um, many of the politicians, the conservative, they've all got trust. And that's going to remain, whether it's a conservative government or, um, you know, it's, it's been there for thousands of years. So the Knights used to go off and fight the Crusades and then leave their property in trust. And I yeah. believe they also put a chastity belt on their wife to protect those that situation as well. So I, I know about that. Can I just go back a bit to... Common law wives, you said common law, but in the terms of common law wives, a common law wife is not really a wife. And lots of people are living together. And yeah. I had a guy who lived with, they were, they were a gay couple. They lived together, this boyfriend and a solicitor. And he died and he didn't have a will. And this guy ended up out of the house. He had no rights. And the sister always had a lot of debt. So they ended up just um, it, it was a mess. I thought this is a, a good lawyer. It was a quite a wealthy lawyer and it all crumbled out and he had to sell. The house didn't go to him at all. He was out on his ear. So but, this, this happens all the time. Well, I think, Charles, one thing is nowadays people are cohabiting. They're not getting yes. married. So you can, have, you can be a, like boyfriend and girlfriend. But as a, as a couple, if you're not married, you have no rights over the other one's assets. And secondly... Yes. When, when things are fine, you know, it's a good relationship. But when you, if you're cohabiting and you're not married, I'm not saying you should get married to save inheritance tax, but if, if, say it breaks down, how many people have a cohabitation agreement? So when you, if you, you're going to cohabit with your partner, have a cohabitation agreement. So if things do, think, uh, do turn sour, it'll protect both of you. But, but yeah. don't bring people to know that, you know, you may have a rich wife, a rich girlfriend, but you have no rights over that over that lady's assets, you know. Yeah, so you can have a cohabitation agreement. I mean, a marriage contract would would sort that out. Or um, the other one, um, there's another contract you can use to to get married. I can't remember what it's called now. It's, it's gone. Um, where where sometimes people don't want to go for a marriage, but they have civil civil marriage probably. civil civil partnership. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm assuming that would would apply, but. As, as you say, lots of people are living together. Maybe the asset was in the, the girl or the man's uh, name beforehand. They start living together. And then if, if 
that person dies, then the kids are going to get into a feud. Maybe the kids say, well, we want to throw this this woman out, you know, this man out of the house. We don't want to, to leave anything for them. So in order to, to I guess, avoid family feuds and, and arguments, the best thing is to have a will, right? It just seems to make sense to me. And, and also... And, and, yeah, go on. And also, for example, say a newly married couple, and say the wife is earning a lot of money, I don't know, 300,000. This is based on a real example, and, and the husband's earning, I don't know, 40,000. Hmm. If they're buying a property, it, it should be tense in common, but it can be unequal. So if the wife is earning a lot of money and contribute to most of the property, then you could split it in the 80, 20, 90, 10, you know, these are very important things you need to think about because the land registry just, just registers property. They don't really care about the percentages. So this is very important, especially now property prices have gone up maybe 300% the last 25 years. The nil rate ban has remained constant from 2009. So they're catching people. And What's the nil rate tax, ban? What is yeah. the nil rate ban? The nil rate ban is 325,000. The resident nil rate ban is 425. But what I ask people... For what? For what? For inheritance tax? Yeah, 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 yeah for inheritance for anything tax. over that, you're then into inheritance tax. Yeah, but there are ways of saving inheritance tax, but that's your ban. You you have you have a tax-efficient will, and then the, this, the will trust, like the property protective trust for residential properties, the flexible life interest for, for vital properties, where you can save inheritance tax on, on second death, you know? Okay, so... As you said, the, the bans have not risen. Uh, so more and more people are getting trapped into inheritance tax. Like my own mother, she she just had a house and never thought she was wealthy. But suddenly the house has gone up over the years. And, you know, we when she died, we had to pay inheritance tax, which was like, wow, you know, you expect inheritance tax as a landed, landed gentry, not ordinary people now, because prices in the, in the southeast, you've got houses selling for well over a million. And, and they've been hit with quite huge tax bills. Well, what I, I really, you know, always mentioned, to make it very simple, I said, do you have children? Do you love them? Yes. Do you, do you, do you, do you hate, do you hate them more than you hate the tax man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true, true. If, if you, if you like your children more than the tax man, then you should do an out of tax plan. Roy Jenkins said, "If if you um, if you hate basically if you if if you don't if you if you love your children more than the tax man, um, I mean you'll pay inheritance tax if you hate the tax man more than you hate your children. Simple as that. So yeah. it can be done. I think Winston Churchill said something that like everyone is legally entitled to sort out their tax affairs in order to pay." as little tax as possible. It doesn't mean you're breaking the law. It just means you're using the system to your advantage. The system is there to be used. You mentioned trust now. That When you mention trust to people, their eyes glaze over. What's a trust? You know, what? How does that work? I mean, that's going to cost tens of thousands of pounds to put into place. They think of offshore trust. and But it, can people protect their assets in trust, say, for, for care fees and, and for people? You can. You, you, can, you can protect against care fees. And secondly, I look at how the wealthy people save tax. So the Queen Mother was lucky enough to have £70 million to give away at age 92, which I think was a bit late, but she survived two months and seven years. We don't know exactly when she died. So forget the £70 million. Now, I have a client who's quite modest. They got £400,000 of assets. And they worked hard all their life. And they said, we don't really trust, we don't trust all our six children. We definitely don't trust our 15 grandchildren. So should you give the money now? Or, or And I said, do what the wealthy people do. Set a lifetime trust. Mother and father can be in the trust. You can put the children in trust. Provided you spend, you, you, you survive seven years, it goes out to your estate. You can even against, insure against the life cover. Um, for example, say I decide to, to go to the Himalayas and do my meditation let go of this of, of the London life, I can just set up a, a life policy, put into trust into me about seven years. And if I die, basically the, the money goes to um money goes to children. The other thing the trust is trust is very mystified, but for example, a lot of people have life cover, but they yes. do not put into trust. 
yeah. For example, like my daughter, for example, my daughter's I have one daughter. Luckily, she's happily married. But say my son in law um, decides to decides decides to leave, and and say this, say there's a payout, for example. Now, if my daughter knows how to get a payout, that's fine. But if I'm paying 150 pounds, for example, for my wife and I, you know, they covered for half a million pounds. And if I pass away and it's not in trust, the insurance company will tell my daughter, oh, your parents are very smart in taking life cover, but the tax man will say they were not smart, smart enough to put into trust. So instead of you getting half a million pounds, can you go back, borrow and steal 200,000? When you give the 200,000, we'll then we'll be cheeky enough to then give the remaining 300,000. So as soon as you buy a, a life policy, yeah. you need to put a simple, flexible trust in you know? it. Yeah, because otherwise the the proceeds of the policy goes into your estate, yeah. could be subject to inheritance tax, and also people would have to wait. A lot of people think the policy should be there, the money should be there when they need it, but getting probate can take a year, and they want the tax before they'll allow you to even apply for probate, so that you can get what's rightfully yours. And it's taken forever in this country. It's it's, it's a joke. But the, for example, say 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 a couple have a policy. Say the husband's got a policy of like a half a million pounds. He's put into trust. And say he, survives, say he passes away tragically. So the, the wife or the next of kin can call the insurance company. They'll acknowledge that the policy is in trust. So what they'll tell the, they'll, they'll tell the wife is basically go to, go to the bank, set up a trust account, and then we will send that money from the insurance company to, to, to the trust account. So the trust account will be there be the executives who carry out your wishes, trustees who look after the money and the beneficiaries. So that that money will go straight from the company, insurance company, to your to the trustees who could be your wife and your your or your your brother or sister, or whatever. So that means then they then then give it to your children. So that means it it serves its purpose. But if you don't put the policy in trust, then you'll be clobbered for inheritance tax on top of. The policy which is and wait a long time before you get your hands on the yeah. money which they they need because maybe the breadwinner has, has died so you can help people with not only setting up a will but sorting out trusts as well so that they can avoid possible inheritance tax possible care fees possible kids getting the money and then blowing it or or maybe marrying someone you don't want them to marry and they, they, you, know, you know what i mean so you're saying give them the money but Put it into a trust which is another legal entity so that you yeah. control it at the same time so you're giving it away but you're in control is, is that roughly have i got that yeah you can have trustees the, 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 there are there are things i mean this is how how all the wealthy people you know they they could they, when you when you're getting a trust you're not the legal owner but you can use the trusts you know so if you own an asset you pay tax and if you control an asset like warren buffett yeah you don't pay much tax and the yeah. use of trust is so unique to English law. So it's not it's not in European law, but so the use of trust, like I said, it's coming from the time of the Crusades. But obviously people are talking about inheritance tax, you know, but these trusts are still there. You can still set up trusts right now to, to keep yeah. a legacy. I know people who are even based in the UK can still do it, but obviously, you know, you need to have the right connect. The most important thing is you need the right people to give you the right advice. Yeah, um, I I met um, I met Trevor twenty one years ago, and as a result of losing my dad, being love, and we paid thirty five thousand pounds in nineteen seventy seven. That equates to five million pounds today. And my uncle stole and squandered the remaining six thousand acres of land and everything they had. But Trevor, Trevor is someone who's got fifty years experience. His team had done thirty thousand wells, bought his daughters in the business. It is a family business, and it's. And they they serve the lifetime trust. They have this particular. So these these are the kinds. Of, so again, it can help keep your legacy mm -hmm. because inheritance tax is voluntary. It's not something you have to pay. If you don't plan, then your parents, your children will be clobbered with that. Okay, great. So if somebody has a problem, if they've got a property or maybe several properties, they should definitely get advice because if they died. It, they, they, and if they haven't got a will as well, who knows what's going to happen? Um, well, but, but, but Charles, you need to with with Section Twenty Four and all these 
George Osborne. He's made a mess for the investors, yet he's privy to the Osborne Little Trust. But right now, when you buy a property, Section 24 has come in, so you can't have such a mortgage interest. But there are two ways of ownership property. One is the legal interest, where there's joint tenancy, tenancy common. There's a beneficial interest. And we have a team of charter tax advisors who actually ask charter tax advisors who can actually, I'm not going to give tax advice, but basically they, they, you need the correct tax advice. Yeah. yeah. So we go to LLP, limited company, and they can create a pension pot which can take up personal raise of tax. So you need the right team of charter tax advisors. We've got, uh, Trevor's got 50 years experience. Um, you know, he's done 30,000 wills. There, there's the step practitioners, institute of professional will writers, and they're not. And the, the accountants are not accountants. They're chartered tax advisors. They they specialize in property tax. You know? Okay, great. And and I, I think that's great. I think unless you want to add anything, I'll probably leave it at that. But I know it sounds a little bit complicated. But first of all, definitely have a will. But secondly, consider trust, especially if you've got assets. And thirdly, get advice. Don't try and go down to WH Smith and buy a will package and try and do it yourself because the chances are it may not be legally done. It may not be uh, if it's not signed properly and witnessed. It could just be thrown out and challenged and all these sorts of things. I mean, there's there's court cases going on now where people are challenging wills and getting into family feuds that they got on along as a family before. But when somebody dies, there's suddenly a dispute because they haven't made a proper will or, or used trusts and, and so on. So I think you must see this all. Well, the last, last thing I'd like to add, Charles, as a result of losing my dad and paying this £35,000 tax and uncle stealing and everything, I do not want anyone to go through what I went through as a child. When I lost my dad, I was 12 years old, so I lost my dad. When I saw these things happening, uncles taking things and causing problems, while well, about 14 or 15, I realised this life is not a good life for me. I realize that I think age of 15, I decide when I grow up, I want to learn how to make sure that I, I keep my essence. So it's very important that my passion to do this, it's a, to, to do inheritance tax, is to keep my dad's assets. So it's a very personal thing. It's not you know, like I'm, a, I'm an accountant trying to save tax. It's a very personal reason. And, you know, I, that's my, my main objective to do all this business is to keep my dad's legacy with the use of trust in english right. TV, very powerful right and and let's let's follow the what the the wealthy people do and there's nothing immoral about it it's just using the trust laws and and, and putting into place provisions that will protect you and your family against possible taxes uh, care fees um and and even being sued even somebody coming after you and suing you if everything's in your own name that could all go if you lose a big case in court. Um, so you're not protected unless unless you build this wall around you. You're not protected. You're open to, to, to all these things that I've just said. Yeah. yeah. So thanks very much, Milan. Um, great to have you back. And I, I hope people will heed your advice and take advice and, and get these things sorted out. As I said, 50 percent of people don't even have a will. And if you're one of those, you need to first do that. You know, that's the main thing. OK. Thanks very much, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.